All righty. Let us get started. Um, so first of all, if we can close the, the door. Uh, I realize we have a small team. I know folks are going to be trickling in uh, because of the weather and traffic. Traffic has been kind of horrible this afternoon. Uh, but Ray has a packed hour and a half ahead of us. And so, uh, so we want to get started as soon as, as possible. And of course, I always have information I want to pass along to you. So we'll get that started. Uh, so first of all, uh, watch the chords. This is the first time we're doing a tutorial, and so, so we've got extension chords, so uh, be very aware of that. Uh, we're trying to improvise something right here. Uh, so just don't get ensnared in extension chords, because that'll really upset other folks with their laptops hooked to it as it goes. Um, and then we're also using brand new uh, um, tags, name tags, and uh, re return them to the box before you leave. Uh, so we can recycle them. Thank you for that. And first off, uh, well, big thanks to our sponsor, Commotion, and Aaron, uh, Aaron Bobmer is in our corner over there. He's our organizer uh, for the event, co-organizer for the event. So thanks for Aaron and, and helping to make this happen. So we appreciate that. Um, let's see, community announcements. Oh, it's raffle time. Who, who hasn't gotten a t-shirt or a, a, a one of those water juggy things? All right, well, let's 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 make that happen first. Now, if you remember last time, it took forever. So we're going to make this try to make this go a little bit faster. All right. So uh, for those of you that signed up, you have uh, your name is on the list in the back, and so we'll get started. And the first number, hey, Sue, do you want to go look at the list? Number five. So who's number five? All right, <laughs> Why green. <laughs> All right. Uh, T-shirt or water thingy? Okay. Oops. So pass that along. It's it's delightful. So we're left with the water thingy. What is that? It's insulated. What do you call these things? Insulated water thing is a thermos. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Seth. All right. Our next number, sweetie, thirty-seven. 37, lucky 37. Stan! All right, Stan. <laughs> you get. Uh, no, we have a one, only one t shirt and one thermos. You, you, you want to give that up? All right, we'll pass this along. Okay. 41. 35. All right, Seth gets something. Excellent. <laughs> All right, he gets the thermos thingy, and it's wonderful. It's insulated, blah, blah, blah. Okay. With that out of the way, uh, we've got our next on-site meeting. Uh, that went out last night. Some of you already signed up for it. Uh, Davis Eights from Change Healthcare will be here on January 31st. Uh, Change Healthcare's first enterprise-scale blockchain solution for, for healthcare. So I believe they, they used fabric. This thing went out early, la, or, sorry, early this year. Uh, so it should be a very interesting presentation from Davis. Uh, coming up first quarter of next year, we have Alturos uh, Healthcare. I'm sorry, Alturos. They were scheduled for this month. We're going to push it into the next quarter. ArcBlock and IBM are also coming in first quarter as well. And then, uh, of course, the Hyperledger Global Forum is happening right now. Uh, and Mar Marissa Ayanaroni, uh, our other co-organizer, is actually there. So she's going to give us a report back. She doesn't know it quite yet, but she will be doing that. Um, OK, so we're on our presentation. And I'm trying to be mindful of time here. So Ray Metz is here, uh, hands-on tutorial, uh, which is installing Hyperledger Fabric and Composer. So a little bit about Ray. Ray is a Hyperledger and Blockchain Architect Certification Trainer and Principal of Seattle Blockchain Training based right here in Seattle, Washington. Uh, this past fall, Ray left Amazon to start his own blockchain business, Seattle Blockchain Training. And, and by the way, the URL is seattleblockchaintraining.com. Makes sense. Uh, with a need so great to fully understand blockchain technologies here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, Ray has been teaching 10 three-day classes for Blockchain Training Alliance uh, and that's blockchaintrainingalliance.com. 
Uh, even at that rate, his group and the Blockchain Training Alliance are continuing to expand with more meetups and other paid training and consulting events around the Puget Sound. So we're very lucky to have Ray uh, present you. today. So <laughs> you want to take it away? <laughs> sure. <coughs> Hello, I'm Ray. Um, so this session is going to be more of a hands-on session, and if you um, if you want to just follow along by watching or uh, looking, that's fine as well. Uh, what we're going to do is install Hyperledger Composer uh, and Fabric on a brand new environment. Um, I assume with this meetup uh, that you guys have some familiarity already with uh, Hyper. Don't come to future meetups and you'll learn more about the product. This is just installing it and uh, it'll give you an idea, kind of a peek into the, the DevOps world of um, the internal components and uh, all the work it takes to get it installed. Um, so I'll get started on this. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is install it on a brand new fresh machine. Um, I'm going to go out to Amazon AWS Web Service and spin up a new empty uh, Ubuntu server. And then uh, we'll, we'll start from that kind of bare bones uh, state. Um, any questions or statements before we, we get into the, the weeds here? All right. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go to my web browser. Um, and I'm using the Brave browser. That's the, the new blockchain browser. I don't know if you guys have used it or heard of it. Um, but uh, I'll just go out to EC2, which I've already got up. And I'm going to launch a new instance. So if you're following along on yours, um, you would do the same to launch your own uh, cloud instance. Or if you have any... A, uh, I almost said Ethereum because I'm teaching an Ethereum class this week and I woke up at 4.45 um, yesterday and today, so I'm a little bit uh, stuck on Ethereum right now. <laughs> um, but if you uh, log into your cloud service, you can install Linux or use Linux locally on your own laptop. So I'll do that now. Um, I'm going to search for uh, Linux, if I can find, remember where their search was. Uh, choose an image. Uh, there it is. So I'll choose Ubuntu. And there's several Ubuntu selections. I'm going to choose the uh, 1604, which is a long-term support version that's been out a while. And I'll start that. And I'm going to pick a size. Um, T3 small uh, has a couple gigs of RAM. Um, you with something half that size. Uh, so I'll go ahead and configure some details. Uh, it's using the same network and storage. And once I get this going, it'll take a little bit. So I'll talk a little bit more about what we're going to do. Um, the hard drive size, I'm going to choose 16 gigs. Um, Hyperledger takes uh, about four gigs to install, um, but we're going to install Fabric first and then Composer next. So that'll be eight gigs. That's like half the drive here. Uh, and then Linux takes like a, a gig or two. Um, and somewhere I wanted to select, I want to make sure I'm in the right network. I guess that's this one. I remember there's one more setting, uh, a network security setting that I want to make sure I get so that I can connect to it once it comes up. Um, let me make sure I find that. Maybe it's after I launch. Let me just get in there and I'll launch it. All right, it's telling me that it's going to cost money. Something of this size, if I were to leave it up for a month, it would be about $40. And so I'll click Launch and use my existing security. So 
So I'm launching this uh, Let me go back to the slides of what we're going to do. So the goal is to have your own uh, environment. So if you were to follow along, um, by the end of this, you'll have your own environment up and running. Um, the difference between Fabric and Composer, Composer is kind of the, uh, the training wheels for Hyperledger. So you get less features, but you get way more ease of use. Um, a, a real corporation wouldn't use Composer at all. Uh, Composer limits some of the major security features in Hyperledger, uh, but Composer is a great learning environment. So um, for this install, the, if you just installed Composer, it would be a lot easier. Um, but we're going to install Hyperledger Fabric first, which is the, the corporate version, so you get kind of a real uh, idea of what it takes to install it. And then um, when we're done with that, um, we'll switch over to Composer, and it's just like one more command, and then uh, that'll be done. Um, so even if you don't follow along, you're going to get knowledge of uh, how the install happens. Um, you can, uh, I'll give some opportunity to ask questions and you'll know how hard or easy it is to install uh, and what the components are. Um, <clears throat> you can run Hyperledger in a Windows environment. I've seen a lot of uh, text for it um, on their website, but um, you know, I teach Hyperledger and I've heard from the community that uh, people run into issues and then that they don't get the support. So I recommend that you use Linux or a Mac, um, but you're welcome to try it with Windows. You could, you could follow along with this, try it with Windows, and if you have success, um, let us know. Um, I've tried it with Windows and failed, and then I, I didn't really try much harder. I just switched to Linux. <clears throat> um, you would need internet and web access to download the, the tools, and... Um, all of the documents, oh, I should show you where this document is. So if you go to um, Seattle Blockchain Training uh, .com, and then you click on uh, course info, right at the very top is this fabric install .ppt. So that's this uh, slide deck. Uh, and you're welcome to copy it, reuse it. Um, I would consider pretty much anything I write to be public domain. Um, uh, so have at it. <clears throat> um, so that instance is, should be done by now. And there it is. So you notice it doesn't have a name. I'm going to name it uh, with this class. Um, I'll just name it meetup. And now I'm going to connect. Actually, it says it's still initializing. Um, and I'm going to double check those network permissions and make sure it's um, in the right security group. This says Launch Wizard 2, and I want Launch Wizard 1, so that may be an issue. Let's see if I can fix that. Um, so I'm going to stop the instance. Oh, I guess I stopped my web server too. Uh, in AWS, you have to set, you, you have to allow all permissions. So any server that you um, launch in AWS will be completely secured from the world. Um, if you want to use it as a web server or if you want to even uh, connect to it from your console, um, you have to let AWS know which IP addresses can connect to it. Um, so you do that with the, the network settings. Um, and I just have to figure out how to change this security group. All right, so once it's stopped, you get a lot more options. And hopefully I can find this option and I don't have to spin up a new one. Here we go, change security groups, change it to launch wizard one, assign, 
and then we'll spin that up and the other one that I stopped. All right, so while those are coming up, and that shouldn't take as long, um, so we talked about Linux. Um, once you have access to the slide deck, you can just click on this link directly. Um, this is the documentation from Hyper about um, how to install Fabric. So all the steps that I'm going over in my slides came out of this page. And um, if I get stuck on anything, I'll, I'll refer back to this page. Um, and then uh, I wanted to mention, uh, you know, Linux has several versions. I'm using Ubuntu uh, 16.04, um, but you can try it on your Mac, which has a, a different version of Linux. You could try it on, uh, how many people are, are get planning to try it in this meetup? Anybody trying it? One, two, three maybe? <laughs> okay. Um, so you guys probably have different versions of Linux than me, right? I'm guessing uh, than Ubuntu 16.04. Um, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, part of this setup, we're going to verify all the versions of software. And uh, as long as you have kind of an up-to-date version of Linux, uh, it should be no problem. So if you want to find out um, information about your Linux environment, um, you can learn your version with any of these commands. And again, you can um, use the PowerPoint to copy any commands you want. Um, <clears throat> and once we get into Linux, which we're about to get in, I'm going to run this uh, apt-get update and upgrade, which will um, kind of uh, make my Linux current like a Windows update. I was uh, definitely a Windows user for um, more than 20 years, so I'm, I'm most, most familiar with that environment. Let me go back. Okay, so these are, they say they're still initializing. I'm going to try to just connect to this environment. And uh, so Amazon gives you a little template and Basically, all you need to know is the username and the um, this string. You can copy the whole string if you're using Amazon. And I'm going to paste it in here. Um, all right, so I've got the command, and we'll see if it will connect. Um, it said it's still spinning up, so I'm not sure if it's going to or not. Let's give it a try. Yeah, it seems like it will. All right, so I'm into my instance, and uh, are you guys able to see this, or shall I try to make it bigger? Bigger. Bigger, okay. Bigger is good. Let's see if we can find a, a menu. I'm not uh, the best Mac expert. Um, that apparently was not the one to click. Uh, <laughs> let's see, how do we make this bigger? Let's just try that one. What's that? Apple Plus. Apple Plus, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Is that okay? All right, so I'm into my instance and now I'm gonna run those commands out of the PowerPoint sudo. Uh, and sudo is more of a um, Ubuntu thing. You might have uh, Red Hat or some other version of Linux, and you might use something besides sudo. But apt uh, get update. And you always want to run your update. check your CPU, your memory, your disk requirements. And uh, there's some commands that I put in the PowerPoint. Free and top will show you your memory. And uh, DF shows you your disk space. So um, I'll run those now as well. 
Mm. <laughs> Don't want that. Let's see, keep the version currently installed. Let's do the package maintainers version. That sounds fine. I don't know what this is. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so it finished and I'm going to run the DF command. This will tell me that my disk is only 8% used. I have 16 gigs of disk that I um, set up in my AWS. And I've got 14.9 gigs free, which is great for Hyperledger. Um, it takes about four gigs for uh, each install. Um, you would want a lot more than four gigs, um, but that's as a base. And then I can type free to see my memory if I need to see that. I've got uh, two gigs of memory. Uh, not a lot, but um, I'm paying for the cloud service. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to talk through this a little bit, this slide, but I just want to stop and give you guys a chance to ask any questions. Perfect. Oh, thank you. Yeah, perfect timing. I was curious, do you have to do the cloud version, or is there a way to do a test net or something on your own without, without paying for the cloud? Um, I could have installed it on my Mac, but I use my Mac and I don't want to break it. <laughs> um, so I'm using the cloud. Great answer. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? Uh, I'll continue. So that once you've got your Linux environment set up and running and you've got disk, you've got memory, uh, your Linux is up to date, uh, the next step is to install all the prerequisites um, before Hyperledger. Um, once these are all installed and that they're proper versions, Hyperledger installs in about two minutes. Um, so most of the work, you can spend hours installing Hyperledger, but most of those hours would be uh, installing this software. So um, I've got a slide for each one of these, and um, I will uh, try to, I don't want to talk through it too much because uh, then it, it might drag on over an hour, but um, basically what I'm going to be trying to do over the next um, half an hour or so is work through this list and get all these versions up to date, um, and then at the end we'll verify it and then we'll run the one Hyperledger command and we'll be, we'll be done um, with Fabric. And then we can repeat it for uh, Composer, but since this is done, Composer is just like one more command and then Composer's done as well. <coughs> um, all right, so the first command is curl. Uh, what curl does is it allows you to go out to web pages and uh, if there's a link to download a file, uh, you can copy that file locally. So Hyperledger uses curl to, to get its own code and bring it down to your server. Um, so <clears throat> the nice thing about Linux is curl is already installed. If I just type curl, um, it knows what that com command means and uh, it's telling me that uh, I could put some options on there, which I'm going to use the dash dash version option. And I'm just going to assume uh, that this version will work with Hyperledger. Um, if you have a Windows machine, you'll have to install curl. It doesn't come by default. Uh, so that one is very easy. Uh, the next one is Node. So Node is uh, a programming language. It's JavaScript. Usually, depending on which web browser you're using, whether you're using IE or uh, Chrome or Firefox, they'll all come with their own JavaScript execution environment. Um, Node is basically that same JavaScript execution environment, but without the web browser. So you just install it directly on your server, and the nice thing is you can run uh, JavaScript commands without the web. So you could replace uh, shell commands, that kind of thing. Um, along with Node, you get this uh, NPM, which is the Node Package Manager, and that um, lets you install packages of software, and this thing is so popular now. Um, a lot of you guys, this is probably old news, um, but a lot of software, you just uh, install the Node Package version of it, and a lot of the software that we're about to install 
comes in a node packaged version. So uh, that's very nice. Um, but one of the things about Node is there's several versions of Node out there and several versions of Node Package Manager. Um, and so now you need this Node Version Manager in addition to them so that you can be on the right version of Node as you're installing, installing your software. Uh, so we're going to install all three of those. And uh, the way we're going to do that is um, we're going to use curl, which we just verified. And we're going to go out and get Node Version Manager first. So I'm just going to right click and paste this. And hopefully, let's see, is it going to go or not? Let me try them one at a time. You might not like uh, pasting from PowerPoint. I'm going to paste it into a uh, text editor first. And I'm going to try to run all three together just to save time. We'll see if that works. And no. So if, uh, if this doesn't work uh, the third time, I'm going to go out to Node's website directly and I think what may have happened is, okay, let me just try this command. Sort of. Uh, I think I might, no. what we're passing it up. Just seems strange to me at this prompt. Um, and I'll check and see if it's Okay, I'm gonna grab the command from the web. It might have, um, I might have ruined it when I uh, pasted it in here. So I left these commands on the PowerPoint. And this stuff moves so fast, if you were to install Let's see if we can go grab the right. All right, it looks very similar. Um, first, we do this command. Command C. Okay, that looked a little better. And then we run this command. Run. Um, it ran my Uh, 0.33.11, which is what we were looking for. 
Once we have NVM, um, NVM is the version manager. It can install multiple versions of Node. And so installing Node uh, is very easy after that. All we have to run um, is this command, NVM install, and give it the version we want to install. Um, for Hyperledger, I would recommend this version and not uh, version 9. So we'll run that. And then after we install it, um, we'll use it and set it as the default. Um, I think that's probably already done because this is a brand new machine. Um, but just in case, <clears throat> I'm going to run it. So if you had an older version of Node on your machine, then um, you might be defaulting to an older or newer version. So we'll run these commands, which that is not the one. Copy. Wow. Let's try that again. <laughs> I don't get a, a copy. I get a command C, but it doesn't seem to work. So I'm just going to memorize it. Uh, NVM alias default V8140. All right, great. So it's one of the more difficult. The Go programming language. All right. So the Go programming language, um, this is similar to C++ or Java. It's a full programming language. It's very you'll be using this language. And uh, <coughs> I, um, I'm going to try these commands. We can make a directory. Okay, um, so I'll go ahead and do that. There we go. I need the C. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're downloading Go. We're extracting it in our local folder. And once we're done extracting it, we moved it into uh, local. Um, we want to profile, so we're going to take these three export statements that we just um, ran. So I'll do that. Um, 
and I forget the command insert beneath. Insert over here. And uh, I'm going to paste. And then I'm going to clean up my um, double quote there. And that looks good to me. So I will escape colon right quit. Um, so that's the, the Vi editor. If you're not familiar with that, um, you're lucky. <laughs> so, um, so we did that uh, in Vi, and now we're going to, um, we're not going to run this sudo command. Um, this is an old version. Um, we're just going to type which go to show which one we have. Uh, you can install go from sudo, but it's not the version that Hyperledger requires. <coughs> so this is the, the version that I copied. And then if I type go version, I believe it was, um, it gives me the, the version. And uh, I've got 1.11.2, um, which is what I want up there. All right. So that was also long one. Um, let you guys ask any questions or... Um, okay, great. So the next one is to install the uh, Google RPC library. The nice thing about this um, RPC library is it's a part of Node.js. Um, we can use Node to install it. And uh, anytime you run an npm install command, you're using Node. Uh, and it makes life very easy for you. So um, this one is, should be a one-liner, and then we'll move past it. <clears throat> so Google RPC is a, um, it's a communications protocol that Hyperledger uses uh, for its components to communicate with each other. And uh, it installs very easy. So that was done. The next one is Python. Um, you can just see if you have Python on your machine by typing Python. Um, it doesn't come up. Uh, your, um, your operating system, in this case, Ubuntu is telling me that there's a couple ways to install Python. Um, Hyperledger does not, it's not compatible with Python 3. It's compatible with the older um, Python 2.7. So you want to use the Python minimal option. And uh, you can just do this command, sudo apt install python dash minimal. Um, I've got that command on the slide. It's nice that the OS tells us um, how to do this. And your OS might be different. So now when I type um, Python dash V, and I believe it's an uppercase V, we'll see if that is true. Uh, yep, version 2.7 shows up. So a couple easy ones there. Um, Git is another one that's very easy. Um, if you have Linux, um, you probably already have Git. It's just part of the, the operating system. I'm going to run a git dash dash version. And I see that there's uh, a version of git installed. When I go out on the web, um, git is up to 2.20. Um, I'm just going to leave it at this old 2.7. Um, and it seems to work. So... We'll skip past that. Okay, and one of the, the last things that we install is Docker. Are you guys familiar with Docker already? Half of you? Okay. Um, so Docker is basically like a virtual machine software. It allows you to run a computer within a computer. And um, one of the features of Docker is that the operating system files are shared. So if you're running five computers um, on one server, then uh, you don't have to install the operating system five times. It's, it's shared uh, between those five, uh, which can be good or bad, but um, Docker has proven very popular, and uh, Kubernetes is kind of the next 
generation of Docker. Um, the Docker company might not think of that, but um, and the industry is very excited about Kubernetes and the cloud, and uh, it's all, to me, it's all the same technology. It's basically uh, a more efficient, newer VM technology. So Hyperledger um, uses Docker even in production. So if you uh, install Hyperledger, you're always installing it in Docker containers. There's no way to run Hyperledger without Docker. And as we install it today, um, it, it's gonna download a bunch of Docker containers uh, for all the different components of Hyperledger Fabric. And then they just sit there kind of at the ready. And so as you spin up a node or an orderer or a client or whatever service you're spinning up in Hyperledger, using the Hyperledger commands, it's just taking those Docker containers and making copies of them. Um, so you have kind of a source and then multiple targets. Uh, so Docker is very important. If you don't have Docker, um, you won't have Hyperledger. So let's go ahead and install it. Um, to install Docker, uh, I didn't copy all the commands. It's quite uh, a long, not too bad, but it's a longer install. So I just used the, um, their website uh, as a reference. So let's go out there. And we're using the Community Edition, which is their free one. They have an Enterprise Edition. Um, we're also using the Docker Engine, which is their back-end components. We're not using the full Docker UI and all the, the bells and whistles. Um, Hyperledger just kind of sends the commands in the background to Docker, and all you need is the engine. So I'm going to click on uh, the version of my operating system, which is Ubuntu, and I'm running... Uh, I think I can just click the whole tab. Do I have to click one of these? There we go. Um, and then it's going to tell me, I hope, how to install this thing. Let's see. No, I don't want that. Have to remember how I did this. This one is a little more complicated. Let's try that. Okay, so this is the page that I installed it from. And uh, the reason I didn't link this in the slides is I don't know if you're using Ubuntu or not. And there's about um, six other options um, on how to install Docker for various operating systems. So you guys can choose uh, which one you want. So we don't have to uninstall an old version. Um, we can just go straight to the install. So it's asking us to run update, um, which we did earlier, but we've made some changes since then. So let's go ahead and run that. Whoops. <laughs> I always seem to forget the first character. <clears throat> All right, so we've got our update. And then um, we run an apt-get install um, for several packages. And it's nice that we can do them all in one command. So these are the Docker prerequisites. And once we've got those, <coughs> then we can um, use the curl command. So that command is used quite heavily. Uh, that's why it's built into Linux. Um, I think this is what we want to copy. All right, it just said OK. <clears throat> and then we want to verify a fingerprint. Actually, yeah, I think we just run this command. And so it's going to verify the version. And we can see it ends in CD88, which is what we're looking for, I hope. Yes. <coughs> and... Finally, um, 
we run this last sudo command. They can't seem to make it easy. <laughs> uh, there we go. Those are so fast, it's, uh, it seems like it's not doing anything. Let's hope that's not the case. Um, and why are we starting again here on CE? Okay, that must have just been the repository. So now we keep rolling. This is why it's not on the slide. Whoa. That's not what I wanted. I'm just going to hit. I don't think it's going to hurt me to hit enter here. Um, let me try copying this again. That's what I wanted. And finally, we get this one here. I think this is what actually installs Docker. All right, that looks like it's doing something. That's good. All right, um, at this point, I believe Docker is installed. Um, I don't think I need these other steps. Yeah, um, so I'm just gonna run a Docker version command and see I'll run this command and see what version I've got. And I'm looking for um, 18. There it is, uh, 18.09. Um, I put a note on here to check the data location. If you're installing Docker on a clean server like I did uh, today, um, I don't think you have to worry about the location. I've tested installing Hyperledger. I'm not exactly sure how to check this um, and verify it, but uh, Hyperledger installs just fine, so um, it, it's in a writable location. Um, if you already have Docker installed and it's going you know, to your personal directory or something, um, you may have to change the location before you can run Hyperledger. Um, okay, the next one is Docker Compose. Uh, we thought we were done with Docker, <laughs> but uh, we're not. So Docker Compose um, has its own install script. Luckily, it's much easier. I think it's a one or two liner. Um, so we'll go out here. And uh, I'll just say that it's another component of Docker that Hyperledger uses and expects to be um, available. So we're going to install it uh, for the Linux version and it's using that CURL again. Get very familiar with that. So that downloaded it locally. And once we have a local copy of Docker Compose, we can mark it executable and then we can um, install it or use it. I think it just is ready to use after we mark it executable. All right, so now um, we'll just check the version. Um, with a docker dash compose dash dash version and I can copy that one off of my PowerPoint. Um, all right, uh, so we've got docker compose on there and it runs. It shows us its version number. I believe that is the last 
uh, prereq step. So I've got um, kind of the same slide that I had earlier. Um, I'm not going to run all of these checks, but I am, uh, just by memory, if you guys spot something that we haven't installed, um, let me know so that I don't uh, uh, encounter an error on the next step. So curl, I know that's working. We used it many times. Node, uh, we also installed and used it afterwards. Um, NPM is part of Node. Uh, Go, I remember installing. GRPC was a package, a node package that we installed. Python, we used the operating system version. Git, uh, we also used the operating system version. Um, Docker, we just went through. So that's it for the prerequisites. Um, <coughs> what's that? Yes. Right, NVM is a version manager, so NVM is never used, um, but it's, it's, you use it to install Node. So there's uh, 10 different versions of Node out there, or actually probably 40 different versions, and NVM helps you pick which version you're using. Uh, but the software like Hyperledger would never use NVM. Never say never, but... Um, <laughs> Good. Uh, any other questions before we go on to install Fabric? All right, great. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, this is uh, good. I was, I was concerned that this might take over an hour, so I'm glad that um, I'm glad that we're here. <laughs> it's only we're we've got like six slides left. <clears throat> um, all right, so. Installing Fabric, um, <clears throat> I'll talk about Fabric again. Um, so Fabric is a component of Hyperledger. Let me go out there. So Hyperledger is a collection of software. Um, all these different components, um, some work together, some don't. And Fabric is kind of the flagship Hyperledger project. Um, it's the one that, that came out first and worked the best, uh, and it still has the largest community. Um, when corporations run Fabric, they go through this process, these prerequisites, and then they install and use Fabric directly, and they do so without Composer. Um, Composer is kind of your, your training wheels or your entry point into learning Hyperledger. And quite honestly, that's where I'm at. I'm still um, working with Composer myself. Um, if I didn't have Composer, I wouldn't be able to use Hyperledger at all. It's, uh, there's a lot of um, archaic commands, and uh, I list some of those in my PowerPoint. So we'll install it, but we're not really going to go much beyond that. Um, as soon as we're done installing Hyperledger, um, we're going to switch over to uh, Composer and install that, which uh, will go very fast. <clears throat> Should go very fast. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see if I can. So we want to figure out where we're going to put fabric and uh, the suggested location from their um, website is just a folder called fabric samples. You could put this folder anywhere you want. So we're just going to put it at our home drive. This is the same location that we've been working out of the whole time. Um, and then there's basically one command. So Fabric installs very easy if you have all the prerequisites, which I hope uh, will be the case right now. So I'm going to copy this command. And for luck, I'm going to put it into my uh, text editor to clean it up a little bit. So the command is just to, um, to basically run this bootstrap.sh and you can look on GitHub uh, and look at the contents of this uh, and to see what it's doing. It's pulling down a bunch of uh, Docker images and putting it, uh, organizing it into a new folder called Fabric Samples. And I don't have to be CD'd into Fabric Samples, I haven't even created that yet. Uh, it's going to create that for me. 
Um, yeah, let's just do that. So I'll do an LS just to show you what's in my folder. Um, this is that Go test folder that we created uh, when we installed Go, and this is um, just a file that we downloaded. We could probably delete both of those, um, but I'll leave them there. So here's our command. Uh, let's see, paste, drum roll, and it runs. <coughs> Uh, that is not good. Um, <laughs> it says permission denied while trying to connect to Docker daemon socket. Um, oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there always has to be at least one <laughs> thing. Um, yeah, so I think I encountered this earlier and I just forgot it in this run. So we will take care of that. There's a file that it needs to access and we'll try round two. So these... Um, images that it's pulling down. These are Docker images. You'll notice peer, orderer, uh, CCENV. These are, there's about um, eight of these and I have them listed out on my slide. Um, those are the servers. Think of those as servers in the Docker, in the Hyperledger network. And um, depending on how you configure your fabric environment, whether it's a dev environment or a production with multiple nodes, um, your partners might be running some and you're running some. Um, so these are kind of the source for all the nodes and all of these will be different. It's just one of each type of node. And then as you use the Hyperledger commands, um, it will copy these nodes uh, you know, and, and make them operational. So you can see the various sizes. Um, they're up to, uh, you know, almost two gigs a piece. Some of them are small. So that was it for the, the Hyperledger install. Um, I'll point out a couple of things from the slides. Um, These are those images. So there's, uh, looks like nine of them. And I just kind of shortened the names on them so you can see what they are. And there's a uh, folder in there called bin, which I'll show you. But it, bin contains these files. These are the actual commands that you would have to learn and run if you were using Fabric directly. Probably more than half of these commands directly. Let's you um, run those commands without having to type them out. <clears throat> so I can show you that bin directory. So now we have fabric samples. Um, in here, these are those commands. And generally, you would want to make, if your server's purpose is uh, to run Hyperledger and you're going to be writing these commands often, um, you don't want to always have to reference the bin folder. So um, I put a, uh, a path statement in there. Um, I'm probably not going to put this one in the, the boot up, but um, I'll just put it out there now. So if you're not in the folder, you can type uh, discover and it'll tell you how to use that command. Uh, in the PowerPoint, I went out to the web and looked up uh, what each of these commands do. And I just wrote kind of a one-liner on the purpose of the commands. So if you were just installing Hyperledger Fabric, you would be done at this point. Um, the, if you're learning Hyperledger Fabric, then you want to install Composer. Um, the nice thing about Composer is there's a script.
script that does most of those prerequisites that we went through um, all together. And uh, I don't know how well it does it, but um, it might you know, a lot of time. Um, so let me go to. Oh, this is just an average version. This version is not quite out yet. They're uh, still checking it going forward, and they're still changing the doc documents over. Um, we just installed with 1.3. So I just wanted to mention that if you come back to this in a month or three months, um, you'll probably be working with a different version. prerequisites. So we can go out here. <clears throat> and you'll see they require Docker, they require Node, NPM, Git, Python. It's all uh, similar stuff. Um, and then uh, they have a script to install all the prerequisites. So you can uh, run this command and um, it should uh, install all the prerequisites. Um, in my experience, it needs some tweaking usually, but uh, it's a great place to start. And you could also look inside that script and uh, you know, kind of be um, reverse engineer it. Step that we did, um, and it's breaking out some of the other steps. So that that one script doesn't really do it all. Uh, but, um, the next step for composer. some errors here. So I think we want to run their prereq script. Um, yeah, let's run theirs. It should all be done, but there's probably something in there that is unique to Composer that they want. So this is pulling down the prereq file, and this is granting permissions on it. And this will run it.
I will. It's <laughs> a good idea. So, um, as part of the Composer suite, the Composer basically makes Hyperledger easy to use, and as part of the suite, um, it gives you a REST endpoint that you can um, make puts and get uh, and post uh, messages directly against your Hyperledger objects. and that Oracle um, kind of picked up on that software and they were going to host their own uh not be supported by other vendors. I don't know exactly what this does. Um, I would just be reading it, uh, so I don't want to act like I know what the generator does. Um, I'm just going to install it as part of the suite. When we get to the end of it, um, we'll try to connect to Composer and run one of the samples uh, through the graphical user interface. And that will um, show us that this all worked. Uh, Yo is another tool. This is um, you know, a web programming or testing interface. expose them as a website so you can kind of similar to rest you can go in and uh, and set um, you know create records and see them have any of you guys used hyper uh, composer playground so have you used ethereum's remix compiler I know Seth has. When you're programming Hyperledger, um, you can write chain code. Uh, and if you're using Composer, you write it using JavaScript. Um, there's a graphical interface. And uh, that interface is called Composer Playground. Um, rather than doing all this, if you just simply want the graphical interface and nothing more, um, IBM hosts a site. We could just go on Google and say uh, IBM Composer and you just um, use it directly. You don't have to install anything. Um, but we're going to make it, uh, we made it hard on ourselves. Uh, so we've installed it. Now we're going to uh, use our own Composer Playground. We're not going to depend on IBM's version. So to do that, we have to install Composer Playground. We thought we were done a while ago, but there's still a command or two left.
and uh, they have a special content for composing. creating those Docker images. Um, and since we already created them in Fabric, to create another copy of them for Composer um, is not that much more. Um, these are the, the bulk of the size, so we created three and a half gigs of images before, and now we're creating another three and a half gigs. Uh, this is the Composer copy. So we have Fabric installed, we have Composer installed, um, they're kind of two separate things. But they both have a core of fabric. Okay, so we've got that. Congratulations. So that's um, That can be copied. This script is actually so it's using those copies. Editor. Yep, that's the command. And we'll see how we're doing. I think some of those cards were already created. Yeah, they're good. Okay, so I'm going to run that command again. So when I run this command, it's basically for my it's going to get about an hour ago this was a brand new empty instance but now it's a uh, composer web server I hope uh, there we go 
colon eighty eighty. If it doesn't come up, I'm, I'm not going to troubleshoot it here. But I want to show you how to search for IBM's version. So IBM's cloud is called Bluemix. And uh, it's Composer. Uh, it's the environment that we want. So Google will show you uh, composer-playground.mybluemix.net. That's the address you want to look for. And this is IBM's uh, version of Composer. So they already work on installing it. Uh, if our version uh, comes up, it seems like, uh, seems like it's still initializing. It's struggling. of and pick a sample blockchain and deploy it. And then once you have your sample blockchain deployed, you can uh, connect to it. And Oh, sure. F11. Uh, I don't have F11 <laughs> on the Mac, um, but I have this one. Yeah, is that better? And I can do a command plus a couple times. Is that better? Oh. Um, there's probably, it'll probably tell me in here. I, it, I don't.
And uh, I installed it twice, once for Fabric and once for Composer. So if I use the df command, let me stop my uh, web server here. Control C, there we go. If I use the df command, my hard drive is only 46% used. I have a 16 gig hard drive, virtual hard drive, and I'm less than eight gigs used. Uh, each installation was about three and a half gigs, and then Linux was around a gig. So about five, five, six, probably mm -hmm. Linux plus uh, everything else. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I'm not sure. Memory on there as well, but this is only a two gig server, so it's less than two gig. It looks like um, actually it looks like over half of it is free right here. So that's uh, good. Oh, great. Yesterday. So if cool. Know, I'm through it. Nice. Uh, any, um, Does this work? My home windows. Oh, okay. Sorry, uh, any gotchas? Yes. Um, the node was probably the hardest one, just because cutting and pasting didn't really work correctly, so I had to run a couple of different commands. But yeah, it was, it was pretty straightforward, actually. It was much easier than I thought, because I tried about eight months ago and failed. Oh, so maybe something there's a new, new thing. So it's it's basically because in the October release of Windows, um, there's a thing called uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Mm -hmm. So you enable that, and then once you enable that, then you install Ubuntu from the Windows Store, and then you get a Bash shell on Windows. It's not a virtual machine. And then I ran, I installed Docker for Windows, and just it just went. I followed a lot of the stuff that you did just right online and followed the instructions, and it just worked. Excellent. So, <laughs> Great, I'll try Windows again then. I think this is a relatively new thing. <laughs> cool. It's, it's October, so I think that's why. Thanks, thank you. Go ahead. So I want to ask you or somebody else here in the room if they have used the, the Mac installation, the installation on Mac with uh, the Xcode and everything else. And I want to understand if this is uh, a, heavier, a heavier process in terms of um, more difficult and getting and using more uh, resources, or the Ubuntu one is supposed to be the linear ones, the linear one. I don't have experience installing on a Mac, but I'm not aware of anything that would cause it to use more resources. Um, Mac ha has a Xcode will be probably at least four or five gigs if you install it. Yeah, I'm not familiar with Xcode. Uh, I don't. I don't know what that is. I looked online and I saw that uh, Xcode is required as part of the Mac installation. Interesting. Okay, I'll look for that if I.
That's it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>